Welcome back to Breakfast at Stinson's. This is John Asher Thompson, and today we are happy to have Jean Lewis with us. Jean is the wife of an old friend of mine. She also is the founder and CEO of uh, a couple of very successful startups, one uh, called Creative Bug and another that's going on right now based in Hawaii called Capture. She also is a mom and a wife and uh, very successful in her own right. So stay tuned. We'd love to have you and uh, subscribe to the podcast. John. Hi. John Thompson, how, how are, are you? you? I'm good. How are you? I'm awesome. I have uh, Becca on the line too. Becca Matimba. She's the hey. our producer. Hi and, there. And nice just a so full disclosure, I'm not sure which state's lines we're crossing over, and I'm not sure how Hawaii feels about it, but you, it's like, you know, those little warnings that they say, um, do I have your permission to record this phone call? You are being <laughs> oh. listened to. So we have, um, yeah. we have Kenneth Haney in the other room. He's their sound guy. So you now all of a sudden have expanded your like user or you, you person interface, you know, by like four. <laughs> okay, great. So it's, it's not really a private conversation, but anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pretend like it is. <laughs> well, um, you'll get through this great, and I enjoyed reading your biography. It was um, I'll tell you when we get into it, but I'm in Austin, Texas, and you're in Hawaii. That doesn't really seem fair. <laughs> yes, I have to remind myself that I live here every day. Yes, it's really surreal. I, I can't even believe that we pulled this off. I, well, I, so that's what we want to talk about today. So um, let me just first say welcome, and we're thrilled to have you. And uh, you are now officially on the Breakfast at Stinson's podcast, and i um, excited to talk to you. Um, I'm going to start by yeah. saying that, um, you know, I've known David forever, and uh, I feel like forever. And when we were talking about this, I thought, oh, that would be great. And I've already shared this with you, but David, who is a banker, and I know he's, uh, I call him my rum philosopher, but uh, <laughs> he's a banker, but all of a sudden he moved to Hawaii. So I said, when we were talking, I, he's like, ah, I don't know if I want to be on. I said, well, maybe I'll get your wife on because we might be more interested to hear what she was thinking moving to Hawaii with her rum philosopher <laughs> husband. Anyway. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, we can cover all that. We're going to cover all of it, but uh so to start, um, why don't you introduce yourself and um, just tell us, you know, your name, your rank, your serial number. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you're back, you know, four... <laughs> where you're from, yeah. and then we'll just, uh, we'll make it a conversation and cover. We have, have a lot, lot, lot of ground to cover that I want to cover. Mom, wife, entrepreneur, startup person, all this, and then, and support group for the rum business the rum in Hawaii. Yeah, for... right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my name is Jean Lewis. Um, I grew up in New Orleans. I'm the youngest of six kids um, from a very Catholic family. Um, my mom was one of six, and so she had always wanted to have six kids herself. Wait, let me stop um, you and say, because people say that all the time, like, you know, it's not like I'm from a Catholic family. I'm from a very Catholic family. <laughs> uh, what does, what does my... that mean in, in a few words? What does that mean in your mind? Uh, there are crucifixes on the wall in most rooms okay which which did you know which did uh freak dave out a little bit because he is not catholic mm -hmm. um my rum philosopher husband mm -hmm. um and so actually when we got married as a wedding gift he gave me what he thought was a middle ground um and he bought me an abstract painting of the inside of grace cathedral in san francisco oh. which was hanging in our foyer and so it was like it's an abstract of the inside of a church so therefore it is religious in some way got it and I've um, seen that, I think, because I've stayed in your house. You, re you recall that? Oh, yeah. When yeah. you walk in. Yeah, uh -huh. I remember. Yeah. Okay. You were, you, were, uh, you were in San Francisco around Halloween, right? I, yeah, y'all were at a party. 2000, yes. I was on a deal out there and, and uh, came back by. It was great. 2013, I think, something like that. So it's been about oh five gosh. years, yeah. 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 Yeah, those are our neighbors. They have the same Halloween party every year, and I love it. Yeah. And I'm going to miss that now being in Hawaii <laughs> coming up I, so I, my uh, my seven-year-old said it's his favorite holiday of the year he just declared to me it's coming up in a month so we, we can talk yeah. about Halloween in Hawaii so I got you off track okay. sorry so so That's you okay. are um you're so very, you're very Catholic yep um I'm not I think I'm more um uh I take an a la carte spiritual approach now mm -hmm. um but I do believe that going to Catholic school you know from kindergarten through 12th 
um, mm. through high school has really given me sort of a solid foundation of which to launch myself off of mm-hmm. to go explore different things. Um, Are the stories know, mom, true? Like in the movies, they always have Catholic school and they wrap you on your knuckles with rulers and things like that. My middle school was pretty tough. Mm. I went to uh, I went to a school in New Orleans that was um, in a convent. Oh, and kind of those cool. nuns were really intimidating. Yeah. I mean, I used to I used to count the, the, the spaces in between the lockers down the hall to figure out I knew I could exactly fit in in the space between the lockers. And so if I saw Sister Ruth or another <laughs> another nun that you I knew hide. was gonna yell at me for no reason, I would slip into one of those spaces. I'd run to see if I could make it. So they were, you know, it was wait, pretty, wait. It was okay, pretty but, strict. Okay. But now <laughs> that you are by the way i'm going to call you jean everybody should know that yes. it's spelled j e a n n e which there's yes. a whole story like becca was saying is that like jean valjean and yeah said well it's pronounced like that but <laughs> now that you're a mom and and poor sister ruth all these years later and you're saying yell at you for no reason wouldn't you say if we talked to sister ruth wouldn't she say there was a reason I'm sure there was a reason. Yeah. I mean, I used to Let's get yelled fair. at for, you know, putting my hand on the wall and, you know, every, every, everyone's skin secretes some sort of oil. And so therefore you're, you're staining the wall. I mean, it was, yeah. it was very, it was well, a and very, if, and if you're, an, and if you're anxious about being yelled at by sister Ruth, you're probably secreting a lot more sweat, <laughs> yes. right? I'm Which also then, running down the hall. Yeah. And so you're running. Space, so I'm then sweating. you put your hand on the wall. It sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy which yes. exacerbates and the vicious circle begins anew anyway yes, a how do really we get off point. on this hey we only have Gosh. so much time quit getting you us are, off track you're telling me so much about i i didn't even think that. that's that's genius you just figured that whole thing out for me <laughs> okay <laughs> oh, sorry goodness. all right so anyway catholic so school I, yes catholic school um i loved it i loved wearing a uniform um you know, I don't think that translated well into my older years when I had to actually dress nice to go to work when I was living in New York, because I was used to, you know, take a shower, brush your hair, walk out the door in your mm-hmm. uniform, no makeup, hair wet, go. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, once I got out into like in college and you wore whatever you wanted, I just lived in workout clothes mm-hmm. because I played sports. And then when I moved to New York, a boss had told me I used to work at Marvel Comics and I used to wear cut off, you know, jean overalls with Birkenstocks and I worked mm. on Park Avenue. And when I left Marvel Comics. Now I know why go... David fell in love with you. If he <laughs> if he could have worn Birkenstocks to Citibank, he would have. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, he wears flip flops every day to work now. Yeah. And he used to wear flip flops in San Francisco when we went out. A fleece, jeans and flip flops. I think you I think he might have I think he might have been in flip flops when when I saw him in the and I think he had a fleece on too probably in the October. Yeah. Anyway. So And the temperature in San Francisco doesn't really support flip flops? No. But it was California so he just used that as an excuse and now that he's in Hawaii I mean everyone oh, yeah. wears flip flops. Oh, yeah. My kids wear flip flops at school. It's incredible. I have these but, um I have I actually took a little while to get used to them but I I was in San Diego I bought these flip flops that are made in Hawaii they're called Oh, something. Do you know what I'm talking about? Olakai. 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 They're awesome. You and Dave probably have matching pairs. Oh, well, when we come visit, <laughs> I'll yes, break them out. you should come visit. Sweet. We're planning on it. Yeah. Well, he That's showed me a map of where y'all live. That everyone's wearing. Yeah, it's, oh. they're really cool. I like them. They're nice. They're comfortable. We live in Austin. Yeah. A lot of a lot of flip-flop wearing people in Austin, too. I love It's Austin. hot. It's hot here. So anyway, okay, so yeah. so you you uh, you grew up in Orleans. Six children. That's amazing. Yes. Wow. So youngest of six, my dad started his own company when he was about, I think, 28. And he had two 22 year olds or something working for him. He um, he started a company called EEC, which was Educational Electronics Corporation. Mm -hmm. And he started off installing language labs in all of the schools around the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Um, Mm -hmm. He knew all the priests, you know, he was really active in the community. And then he branched out and they started doing all of the wiring for all office buildings and schools and sound systems. Mm-hmm. And and now my two brothers, I have three sisters and two brothers, and now my two brothers actually run that company. Hmm. Um, it's still around. What's it called? It's called EEC. Still EEC, okay. Still EEC, wow. yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so one So you've one got brother, startup, you've got business engineer. in your in your blood. Yes. But I wasn't looking for that. And I would have never said that I would be someone that would have started a company. And that totally came at me from, you know, just out of nowhere. I was not looking for it. 
Hmm. Um, what, so what, what, what did you think you were going to do? That? Well, I'd always loved to draw. So I thought, well, you know, my mom and dad very smartly were like, okay, you're probably not going to make it as an artist, but why don't you become a commercial artist, which was, you know, what graphic design is now. And so I had always kept telling people, oh, I'm going to be a commercial artist. I'm going to be a commercial artist. So then when I went to college, I studied graphic design and then I ended up getting a BFA and I kind of did exactly what I set out to do when I was a kid. Hmm. In the background, thinking I would be a pro beach volleyball player. That's what I, I was wondering if you're going to work that in. I was like, I was thinking maybe you were going to say your yeah. parents said, "We don't think you can make it as an artist. We think you should be a <laughs> yeah. professional volleyball player." Yeah, they didn't say that either. No. But, so I, you know, as a teenager growing up in New Orleans, you can get into a lot of trouble, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I spent a lot of my time at a beach volleyball complex out on the lake uh, called Coconut Beach, and that was my hangout spot. And so I would play in doubles tournaments every weekend, and I really got into it. Um, so then when I graduated college and moved to New York City, I actually went and got a partner. I found a partner. We would meet before work, and we'd work out at the Battery Park beach uh -huh. courts that they used where, to have. Where, where were you living, and what year was this? Um, 1995. Okay. And I was living on – so I used to live in the West Village on, um, oh, my gosh, Bedford, 14 mm -hmm. Bedford oh, Street. Yeah. Sure. Bedford and Downing, right off of Sixth Avenue, mm -hmm. and I lived in a six-floor walk-up with five roommates. So you Two didn't, even, you didn't, even, you didn't even have to work out; <laughs> you just walk, you just go home. Yeah, yeah. My parents came to visit me in New York, and I was like, "Oh my God!" And this is where I live, and it's Greenwich Village, and it's so great. And they're and I was like, "Come see my apartment," and they're like, "No." Mm -mm. I was like, "Come on, come on!" And they're like, "No, we we just no, we're not yeah. going to come see your apartment." I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Okay." We'll see. So anyway, so yeah. I tried to do that. But um, by the time you're 23, you kind of, you know, your dreams of being a pro beach volleyball player are sort of, you know, I think that career probably wraps up around 26. Yeah. Um, fell, fell, away, sure fell away for me my sophomore year of high school playing yeah. oh, beach okay. volleyball. So you played volleyball. No, no, I didn't. I'm just kidding. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. No, never played volleyball. Yeah. Summertime. But anyway, but it's, I know that my, uh, my oldest son's girlfriend, way into volleyball, it's a huge sport. I don't recall it being as big. Um, probably wasn't when I was younger, but it's, I mean, it's, it's real, obviously, yeah. you know, I mean, it's big. I mean, yeah, my, so my daughters, I have two daughters, 11 and 13, and they both play competitively and they played on a pretty, pretty intense team in San Francisco when we lived there. And that's one of my concerns is, will I be able to find something comparable here? Hmm. But I figured we're living in Hawaii. This is the yeah. time that we can really get to the beach and explore beach volleyball because there are way more opportunities to play beach volleyball than mm -hmm. there were when I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, you know, I was never a straight A student. Let's just get that out in the open, <laughs> but <laughs> I did play every sport and I love sports and I was actually pretty good at sports. Yeah. And so I, I really feel that sports kind of carried me through a lot of what could have been awkward, difficult times, i.e. middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, we were just talking about middle school. school. Yeah. Yeah. Middle school is brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my 11 year old is really outgoing. Mm -hmm. uh, and her first few days here, I don't think anyone talked to her. Mm. And she was crushed. And uh, I think I, it forced me to live through my sixth grade years all over again yeah. in real time, yeah. which was not fun. And then of course she got through it after four days. She's fine. She's got friends, you know, everything's yeah. fine, but, but it brings back that, oh, you know, yeah, we all yeah. have to go through the trenches and figure out who we are and, and who we're going to be. And y'all are on the Big Island, right? Yes, we're okay. on the Big Island. All right, I want to I want to so get into that, but let's let's we'll, we'll stick with the chronology. So, so uh, and then we'll 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 bring it up. We'll, let's fly through. Okay. So the '90s in New York. I was there in the '90s and working with Dave, but you didn't know David at that point, right? No, I did not know him in New York. <laughs> I met him okay. in San Francisco. Got it. So, okay. so I um. Should I, should I go through? Like, yeah, just, yeah, I, let's, let's, let's okay. go through kind of the work career and, and, so and I, path. Of that. So I played volleyball in college. Um, I, my sophomore year in college, the summer after my sophomore year, I went, I was accepted on the college program at Disney World. And so I went through the lifeguard training program there and I was a lifeguard at Typhoon Lagoon. And it was Typho the most. Typhoon Lagoon, is that in Orlando? Yeah, Typhoon Lagoon is a I water think, park. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I went there. Yeah. Yeah. So is that the one that has that, like the hundred foot drop, straight drop water slide? Probably. Yes. Yeah. That I mean, it's probably be, not a hundred feet. A, but... They have a new one now called Blizzard Beach. Oh, that's where a, that's where we went. I think we went there. That's a melted ski ski resort. Okay. Everything's melted. 
I don't know if you remember that. It was two years ago, but it was crazy. It was it was New Year's and. Anyway, I think that's the one yeah. we're to. But one of these. Hyphen Lagoon is more like Pirates of the Caribbean. You're on this. It's sort of like Gilligan's Island. And... Okay. Anyway, so I lived in an apartment complex owned by Disney with 3,000 other college students hmm. for the summer. So just imagine that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gated community. Wow. And it was like spring break every day for right. three months. Oh I had gosh. the time of my life. It was <laughs> the most Funny. fun I've ever had, probably still to this day. Yeah. But what it did do is I'm from the South, right? I'm from the deep South. I'm from New Orleans. And so when, when, you're, when you're from New Orleans and you think about moving to the city after you graduate college, the city is Atlanta, Georgia. Mm, right. That's where everyone moves to, right? Well, when I was a lifeguard at Disney World, I met all these great people from all the, you know, Dartmouth, Wesleyan, you know, all of these New York, you know, sort of East Coast schools. Um, these liberal art private colleges, which, mm -hmm. of course, I ended up marrying Dave and then he went to Hamilton. So. Mm -hmm. It all came full circle, but, you know, ha gotten, getting to know them really opened my eyes. And then I would go to New York to visit them. And I thought, wow, I love New York. I love New York. So then that summer, I think it was the end of that summer, MTV was at Disney World doing auditions. They were casting for a sports competition show. And so everyone thought it was a beach volleyball show. So they recommended that me and a fellow lifeguard, this, this guy, Bill, was also, like, you know, it was like six, five. I'm six feet. He's six, five. They thought, Oh, it's volleyball. You guys go and crush it. <laughs> well, it wasn't just volleyball. It was volleyball. It was football on the beach. It was racing wave runners. It was, you know, go zooming across on a zip line. It was like human bowling ball, you know, <laughs> on yeah. a rope, knocking over pins. I mean, it was, it was really crazy obstacle courses. And I got cast on the show. And when I got cast on the show, that brought me back to New York because mm -hmm. the casting director was from New York and a lot of the people on the show were from New York. So I went back to New York for New Year's, I think it was. And when I went back to New York, I was planning on moving to San Diego to pursue my beach volleyball life. Mm -hmm. And because um, I'm jumping ahead, but I had done an internship at Marvel Comics. And so I thought, well, I'll stay in publishing. I'll stay in the comics world. Um, I thought I could go work for Image Comics in San Diego and have this whole beach lifestyle. But after spending a week over New Year's with a bunch of my newfound friends from the TV show, I decided I have to be in New York. Because in San Diego, you go to work, you get mm. off of work at six, you play volleyball until eight o'clock, and then you're in bed by nine. New York, you know what New York is like. Was San right? Diego already like Comic Con Central? Like, was that, would that have something to do with the fact that the comic? thing was there or, or was that pre comic no. con okay i don't i'm not sure sort of actually back coincident. then coincident yeah it okay. was a it was a coincidence a mm -hmm. friend of mine from high school that i played volleyball with she moved to la jolla and i had gone to visit her and she had a beach volleyball court in her backyard which oh, kind of wow. did it for me oh yeah and so i thought well i want to come live near her, her name oh, was yeah. angel <laughs> so new orleans <laughs> So I was like, I'm going to go, Jean is going to go live and roommate with, you know, live with Angel. Yeah. Jean and, like, and Angel. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah. We just, we just like it to take it to the next level um, with the French names. Right. So um, I actually have a funny story about that with the Big Island because Dave uh, met Jean who was doing the deal on, you know, the rum company, mm -hmm. um, something to do with the rum company. And he immediately said, are you from New Orleans? And she said, yes, I am. And of course, she was my sister's classmate. So oh, wow. You seem to have cornered the market on that name. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I, I moved to New York. Um, I worked at Marvel Comics. Um, I wasn't getting paid as much as the, my counterparts who were male, um, which really bothered me. That's apropos. And so I confronted, uh, yeah, I confronted my older male creative director duo and I confronted them on the inequality of pay because I had actually interned there for six months. I worked there for free. And then I was hired after I graduated the next year. But then I found out that, you know, someone else doing the same job was making more than me and they were just out of college. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a bump in pay, which was fine, but it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And so I left. Um, I went to VNU Publications and I got an art director job. For Ad Week, Brand Week, Media Week, um, I think they they also publish Billboard magazine, um, trade publications. Let, let me back and up. I, love that. I don't want to get. I definitely yep. do not want to get into politics, but yep. it's funny because my experience is law and banking, and so there was there really wasn't even an opportunity to be like, well, you're a guy and you're a girl, so we think we'll pay you more. It was just like your first year, second year, you know, third year, and you, this is what you get paid. 
how does that even yeah. happen that back, I mean, in the nineties that, that oh, one per, okay. How's that cover? Okay. I mean, I mean, the explanation so me strange was, to me, this is so inappropriate now. And I think, it, I think that if I had been older, yeah. which it probably wouldn't have happened to me. And if I had, if I could have I mean, bought the I company recorded, yeah, if I could have recorded the oh. conversation, <laughs> I mean, the conversation was basically, you're an attractive young girl. This is what your future's. This is what you're going to do for the next few years, and then you might go get married, and then blah. And yeah. then so and so over here has a serious girlfriend, and you know his future is right there. He's committed. Going to have yeah, yeah. He's going to have people to support. You're not going to have people mm -hmm. to support, kind of thing. And I was like, whoa, this is super <laughs> illegal. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. So it's funny because our, you know, when we had our first child and she was a girl, I mean, I told Dave. I said, we're going to name her Parker. And this is before, you know, the internet was like every, you know, your resume, you can find out about everything online, right. you know, ab about everyone online. But I had this vision of like, you know, having this six foot two woman walk into an office named Parker Lewis, you know, who speaks fluent Mandarin and they think it's a guy who's going to be showing up. Yeah. And they're yeah. like floored because it's some <laughs> tall redhead or something, you know? Right. So, were, I mean, that's were you really a Parker? Like, were you a Parker Posey fan also? I was. Yeah. Okay. I she's was too. Sassy and oh, I yeah. just yeah. What was that Everyone movie? Was it Party Girl? Was that name. the one in New York? Party Girl loved that movie. That was funny. I just I just love her and all of the I think she was in a Christopher Guest movie. She was, was she great. in Best of Show. She's oh just yeah. So... Best of Show is great. Which is like strictly ballroom, which we just watched the other day too. If you like that one, that was a good good one. Yeah. Oh I but Parker Posey. Yeah, yeah. Parker Posey was great. I guess she, she just, is great. She, She's still around. She got a book. She is out. great, yeah. Yeah. I mean, she just walks to the beat of her own drum. Yeah. She's she's not trying to be mainstream. She's trying to be her, which mm -hmm. I love. Mm -hmm. And so when people ask me about, oh, you know, because I'm from the South and most people use family names. And so everyone asks me if Parker is a family name. And I'm, you know, I have two sides to it. I have one, it's gender neutral, mm -hmm. which probably goes back to that scarred memory of mine mm -hmm. <laughs> in my 20s. And, and second, I do. I'm a fan of Parker Posey. And I think she's super cool. And yeah. I just... You know, that's awesome. I went for it. Cool. So. I didn't know that. I actually never knew that. So that's great. Okay. So uh, um, yeah. off, off from Marvel. So off from Marvel, working in corporate America, all my friends were working at MTV. I worked in the same building as them. That was really difficult because I was wearing like dress slacks and like a button down shirt. But then I would sneak down to, I think it was the seventh floor or something where they got free lunch oh. and I'd go hang out with the cool kids oh. at lunch, <laughs> you know, nice. And I would complain to my boss about it, who was an older man, and he'd say, you just, you need to dress for the job that you want. And if you look at what you're making versus what they're making, and I was like, oh, but they're having so much fun. They're on the RuPaul show. They're, you know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I digress. Yeah. So, um, we like so I did that. And then, yes. Uh, so I did that. And then um, I had a great. I had a great run at Adweek and this was like in the, I think it was the late nineties by this point. And I wanted to work at time Inc because my priorities were in order that I wanted to get four weeks vacation. Right. So when Perfect. you're 20, I think it was 28 back then. Mm -hmm. And I had found out from my friends in publishing that time Inc gave four weeks vacation. So I didn't care if I went to work for like baby talk magazine. I just needed to get into time Inc to get four weeks off. Yeah. Right. You know, because this is my priority so, so you at could, the time. Yeah, so, which, so you could do what? What was it like at that point in your life? You're like four weeks because I'm going to go do what? I'm just going to go. Somewhere. Like travel. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go to the beach. I'm yeah. going to. I mean, I think at that point I was getting two weeks vacation, mm -hmm. um, which is really nothing. And so I thought, wow, you get benefits, you know, you get four weeks vacation. And that was all I cared about was yeah. like, how much vacation can I get? Yeah. And so I went, um, I went out with a friend of mine who was at Time Inc., and during this time, there was a ton of, you know, it was when the Amazon stock was going crazy and everyone's watching, you know, their AOL stocks back then because, you know, this bookstore stock was going through the roof. And, and who would have thought 20 just, years later it would still be going crazy? Oh, my gosh. I know. Yeah. It's incredible. I yeah. can't even. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of one reason why I'm glad I'm out of San Francisco, but we can get to that later. Um, I know they're in Seattle, by the way, it's yeah. just the whole tech no, right, world. Right, right. Yeah. I know. What I you mean, meant. you're in Austin, yeah. so you've got the tech world as well. Um, I stay out of the fray. So, yes. I am in Hawaii staying out of the fray. Yeah. Just so you're clear. Well, this <laughs> so is, uh, yeah, we need to make sure we, we save time for that. Cause I want to talk about yeah. that. That's interesting. So, um, yeah. yeah, so, so go ahead. 
so I, I told, I, you know, I was, I was dating someone at the time for a few years at that point. Um, and I had mentioned to him, I said, you know, we should just move to San Francisco because we need to go where all the action is. And there's so much exciting stuff happening and people are starting new companies and 20 year olds are starting companies and there's so much energy there. We should go. And he had worked in finance. So he was like, oh, okay, I'll try to work it out with my work. And in the meantime, why don't you start looking for an art director job there? And so I went to, I went to have a drink with a friend of mine in the lower West side. Um, I'm sure the bar's not there anymore. I can't even remember. God, New York has great bars. Hogs, anyway. hogs and heifers. No, it was something yeah, more. No, uh, not. no. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot about yeah. it. Is that still there? No, it's long gone. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> they should just scrub the walls and burn it. Yeah. I might have. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've had a few, few, yeah. few fun nights there. Mm -hmm. So I'm having, uh, I'm having drinks with a friend of mine and she was working at time Inc. And I told her, I said, don't tell any of our friends, but I'm telling you because we're in the same field, you know, same industry. I want to move to San Francisco. And then she said, well, we're actually starting a magazine in San Francisco and they need an art director. Oh wow! And I was like, you're kidding. Good timing. So literally four days later, I'm on a flight to San Francisco with my portfolio. I meet my future boss, um, who's amazing. We have an hour long interview and then we go to lunch to celebrate the fact that he just offered me the job. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, it was like, it was amazing. And, so and what, he said, what when was the job? What was the magazine and what was the job art director? So for? The, the, I was the promotion. So I was the art director on the marketing side for what would become business 2.0. Okay. So the first name was e-company now, which was, not the best name. We all know that. And then we bought business 2.0. Um, and then we took the name. So yep. I ended up being the promotion art director for business 2.0. Okay. That was the, the best time ever. I mean, we had, I think our launch party, we, we had, we held our launch party, um, at Tech Bell park, which is now mm -hmm. called AT&T park mm -hmm. where the giants play. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had the whole stadium to ourselves. Time wow. Warner, I think, I think uh, Bare Naked Ladies was on the Time Warner label. They flew in and did a concert oh, in wow. the outfield. And then I'm pretty sure we gave everyone messenger bags from Timbuktu <laughs> and Palm Pilots. I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was like the course, most insane. Becca, do you know amazing. what Palm Pilots are? Probably not. No. Okay. Yeah. We all have It one. was pre-Blackberry, pre-iPhone. Oh, yeah. they, were, they were so cool. <laughs> I think I still have one in a drawer somewhere. Yeah, with the stylus. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, like they were so cool. The biggest thing. Yeah. So, so anyway, so um, that was amazing. And then I think the next year was all the pink slip parties because yeah. everything was crashing. Oh, yeah. But so, I was glad that I got there in time to, right. like, witness See, that yeah. insanity of 2000 mm -hmm. that was San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, so I, I lived in San Francisco for, gosh, I lived there for 18 years. Mm -hmm. I moved there in 2000. Mm -hmm. And when I moved there... Um, I teamed up with a friend of mine from New York and we thought, let's do a ski house, right? We're going to do a ski house because we've done like a Hampton summer share, right? So mm -hmm. how different could that be? Mm -hmm. Which is totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that um, the fall, I think it was the fall of 2000. No, it was 2001 because it's September 11th. I remember that. So I'm fast forwarding a little bit. I'm still, I'm still at business 2.0. Uh, I'm doing a ski house the winter of 2001 going into 2002. I am, I forgot to mention, engaged at this point. Oh, so, to the guy, my, to the finance guy. Yes, to the finance guy in New York. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I left, he stayed, we were apart. It seemed logical that, you know, we would then get engaged. I'm not really sure. That just seemed like log a logical next step at the, at the time. Um, and then September 11th happened. Mm -hmm. So my friend and I are trying to plan this ski house. And then, you know, we all remember where we were, I think, that morning. And my brother had called me, you know, at 6 a.m. or something, mm, yeah. San Francisco time. And I was living on my own in San Francisco. And I just remember sitting in front of the TV with my mm -hmm. jaw dropped. Mm -hmm. And I was, in, you know, in, I was stunned. Yeah. So I was trying to call my fiancé because he worked down there. Um, where was he? Which so, bank? You remember? I can't remember. Yeah. That's I think right. I've blocked it all yeah. out. Yeah. He also spoke fluent French, and I don't speak French anymore. So there you go. <laughs> I think your brain yeah. just empty Shuts containers. Yeah. Went, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. That's but like he was I'm gonna fine. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring in Moonstruck. You see Moonstruck? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, a long Denver? time ago. Though. And John Mahoney, who just died in the past year. 
Anyway, and uh, he, yeah. anyway, so I, I love the movie, but he would always have a new date at the restaurant where Olympia Dukakis eats. And, and she all, the, the date would, you know, often storm out because he would say something offensive. And then, <laughs> and then he would say, get rid of the plate, get rid of this and bring me a tall, I forget what the drink was, right? But get rid of all evidence of her and bring me a drink. Anyway, so that just made me think of that oh, when gosh. you said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I kind of did that, I yeah. guess. So September 11th happened. It makes and get rid of the French. Life. No French. No more yeah. French. No French. No French. Even though my friend, my name is Jean. Yeah, so yeah. It is confusing. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So anyway, you know, makes you think about your life, September 11th. Mm -hmm. And I just decided, like, we had grown apart. I had been, at that point, I think I had been gone for almost a year and a mm -hmm. half. And so I just, you know, reached out to him. And I was like, this isn't really going to work. So that happened. So we uh, called off the wedding. And then I think a month later, I held a, hey, we're going to all meet at this bar in San Francisco so that 10 of us can meet four new people to our ski house. Um, and Dave was one of the four new people. Mm. And so what was happening was my friend worked at a tech company with his friend. And she kept showing up to work every morning saying, well, how do you do guest fees? And how do you get gas for the house? And how do you buy firewood? And how do you get the snowplow to do your driveway? And, you know, all these questions. And finally... Her, you know, her coworkers said, listen, my house totally fell apart at Alpine Meadows and I've got, there are four guys. Do you guys have room to take us? And so we're like, great, sure, no problem. But we thought we should all meet first because you're spending five months with a group of people that you don't know. Um, and so one of them was, was Dave. And actually my ex person, fiance from New York was actually in San Francisco to talk me into my senses um, and I said, I, you know, I can't really, do it's good to be anymore. pursued. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, you just need to go back to New York and I'm going to, you know, I have to go to this thing. I'm the president of the ski house, you know, and he's like, fine. So he goes with me, which is not awkward. Um, and I meet everyone, you know, the four I'm, guys. I'm coming back to how you, and how did you get a title? I didn't know there was a title. Oh. I'm president of the <laughs> ski house. I mean, like, did you put that on your resume? This is literally just a precursor for how I ended up starting a company. Okay. I think it was always there. I mean, when I was seven, I tried to start a club in my neighborhood called the Cool Cats Club with mm -hmm. a K. You yeah. know, and I wanted to create like a go-kart and paint it all black and yeah. design the logo. And then only certain people could be in the club. You know I mean? It's like- well, only, only the I Cool was, Cats. Yeah, only the Cool Cats. Right. And you were the president so, of that too? Yeah, I was the president. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Wait a second. Do you really have a company or do you just have the title? <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, I, I run 45 companies. I'm the president of all of them yeah. and the chairman of the board. I mean, hey. I love tech. it. It's all it about the title. Founder. I know. You can be the founder and CEO. I need you to just give yourself that. titles yeah, all day long. I love that. Yeah. So anyway, so long story made short, you know, I got to know Dave. It was such a great story because I was not interested in anything because you know i'm just free after four and a half years of you know being with someone and he just he just did the most perfect thing like he and i would go trail running you know that's my thing i like to go running although he's way better trail running than i am which annoyed me but we went you know we would work out together and go hiking and i, I would always say like okay you know as long as this is like the plutonic sort of friend thing and he's like yeah yeah, yeah no problem and i think dave has this quiet confidence where he just thought she'll come around. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I'm not coming around. This is not, I'm not coming around. I'm not interested in dating anyone. And so finally he, um, I said to him, I, I think I made a comment to him about how, you know, I still have a wedding dress in my closet. And so he tells me, he's like, you, okay, you need to put your wedding dress on. I own a tuxedo. I'm going to rent a limo and come pick you up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to the cliff hotel and pretend like we got married and get free drinks all night. <laughs> I mean, how awesome is that? That is pretty awesome. Sounds like Dave. <laughs> and I was like, that is so awesome, but no, but Oh my God, that's so awesome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, so that, you know, after a series of events like that, you know, I mean, how could I not marry him? Right. It just happens. Oh, yeah. So glad you did. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you met. So, that's a great, that's a great love story. Sounds like a, yeah. a, a, I, although actually I got to tell you, I was really, I hadn't heard that about the wedding gown. I, that that would have been fun to hear about that actually happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't. I wonder if yeah. he's like, if that's like a source of pride or I don't know. <laughs> he just, he, he's, he's this, he has this, uh, 
you know, when I found out he was in finance, I was like, oh, not another, another, you know, I, another I'm like, a, you know, I'm a graphic designer. I'm an art major, mm -hmm. you know, through and through. Like, I don't want to talk about how the market screwed you today or mm -hmm. whatever you guys talk about. Like, I don't speak that way. And he when, when when I said that to him, I said, oh, you're in finance and I don't really, you know, want to date anyone in finance. And he said, well, I'm not at work. And so why would I talk about work? And I was like, what? And he's like, when I'm not at work, I don't talk about work because why would I want to do that? And I was like, oh, you're good. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. You know, because some people just stew about it. And the ironic part is that I stew about work all the time and I'm tossing, you know, 10 ideas out there. And Dave's like, can we please stop talking about it? So, well, well, let's, 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 let's shift gears because I want to make sure we touch on the things. Yeah. So speaking of work, um, you know, and I started by saying, um, when I was talking to Dave, I thought, oh, this will be great because we really do want to get perspectives from different people. <laughs> and, um, but it's, you've started two companies now, right? I mean, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, and you've got a family, so your mom, wife, entrepreneur, you've started two companies and now you're living in a foreign or not, you know, foreign, but you're living a long way away from home. Yes. And, um, can we, uh, and, and then, I, and then, so what, what I'd like to do is why don't you tell us quickly about the first company you started, what happened with that and what you're doing now. And then I want to hit you with some questions about, um, you know, success and what you're doing with your life and your thoughts relative to your kids and your family and where you're going, all that kind of fun stuff. Okay. So, uh, creative bug. So I bought a URL in 1999 when I was living in New York and it was creativebug.com. And I actually bought that URL to put my portfolio online so that I could then look for a job in San Francisco, um, which was all around the same time that I had talked to my friend. And then that happened really fast. Um, and so it's 2011. I'm working at Time Inc. I love my job more than anything. I love the people I work with. I've never worked with smarter people in my life than at Time Inc. Um, the level of professionalism, just everything about my colleagues at Time Inc. was just like amazing. I used to have nightmares that I accidentally quit my job and then wake up like in a panic and then realize, oh, thank God, that was just a nightmare. You're still there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still there. So 2011, I hit a wall and I couldn't do the job anymore. And I could do the job like, like, like I could do the job easily. Right. I knew everything about the job. You know, it wasn't as challenging as it used to be, but I, I literally was like, could not bring myself to do this job anymore. And it was driving me crazy. So I started doing freelance on the side to see where else maybe I could go and maybe I should finally start looking around. I can't stay at timing forever. Um, and you know, I did, I did freelance for some tech companies and I, I went through the process of like meeting people and interviewing people, but nothing really came through. And when you're doing freelance, so, you're doing freelance, what? I'm doing, I mean, I don't want to name the, the companies. That no, I no, 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 no. But, but like, what, what were you doing? What were the services you were providing? I was doing style guides for their brand. So I was primarily a brand art director. Okay. So I would come up with a logo. I would come up with the messaging. I'd work with a copywriter to Got come it. up with the messaging. And then we create campaigns around the messaging. Mm -hmm. I would create a style guide that other designers would adhere to. I would create ads, you know, print ads, uh, billboards. We did billboards. Um, I'm a total marketing art director. So, okay. you know, stationary uh, event invitations, you know, like when I worked at Time, I, we did the Time 100 invite, you know, this, the big fancy event and um, Time Person of the Year and stuff like that. So um, so I would do freelance for other companies and then um, nothing was really coming through and I felt really bo boxed into a corner. I felt like I wasn't being a good parent and I wasn't being good at my job, which is not a great feeling. So we, I went home to New Orleans. We went home for Easter um, in 2011, I think it was. No. 2000, I think it was 2011. Anyway, my sister, how, so how old, one of my how older really, sisters. Yeah, how old were your kids at that point? My kids were three and five, okay. I think. Because mm -hmm. um, I started Creative Bug when my kids were four and six, yeah. which was really, uh, I question my sanity. That's like really young ages for mm -hmm. me to go off and try to start a company. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyway, I went home and my sister is, do you know what Reiki healing is? Reiki is A little like, bit. Yeah. Okay. R -E -I -K -I. Well, anyway, she I seen that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So she is a Reiki master. Um, she's also like this genius computer science, you know, has like a, you know, PhD in like robotics. I don't, she, she is one of those people that's always excelled at everything. 
Um, and then she, she followed this other path and she is a Reiki master among other things. She's sort of a life coach and that's sort of a light way of saying it. So when I was home, she, she was like, you are so agitated, you know, and you're the typical older sister way. Cause she, you know, she used to get me in trouble all the time. She's like, you're so agitated. Like you need to just calm down. Like, you know, let's, let's talk about what you're, you're what you're going through. And I was like, I'm blocked. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, you know? And so she said, write down 10 things that you could do next. And so, you know, we had these little strips of paper and I wrote down 10 things and I got to like nine. And then I was like, I don't have any other ideas. There's nothing else I really want to do. I don't know. And she's like, just write down that you're going to start a company. And I was like, I'm not going to start a company. Like, I don't want to be my own boss. I don't want to pe- chase people up for invoices. It's not going to happen. She's like, fine, whatever. Just write it down. And she gives me that like sort of smirky smile that like older siblings give you. Like, right. you're an idiot and I know more than you. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I wrote all these things down. And then we did, the, I don't know if you know about, you do this test where you put your your dominant arm out, you know, to the right, not, you know, I'm straight doing, out. I'm doing that now. Yeah. And then, and then you read aloud each thing that's on each piece of paper oh, okay. while someone, not you, is pushing down on your arm. Never heard and of this before. Is this part of the Reiki? Belief, no, no, okay. it's not part of Reiki. But Reiki. It, the belief is, is that our bodies know what's best for us before our minds do. Okay. And so your body inherently knows what your next step is or where you're supposed to be going. Hmm. And I, you know, on, on, on ones that I thought for sure I was going to be doing, my arm would go straight down. And on the one that was like, you're going to start your own company. You're not going to have a boss. I was the strongest. I mean, she couldn't even push my arm Hmm. down at all. And so I said, whatever. I took part in your funny, weird experiment, you know, that I'm not going to start a company, but thank you. This is great. You know, whatever. I'm just being kind of snarky. Right. And so we left for a few days. We went to the Gulf coast to go see a friend of mine who is an artist who makes a living as an artist. And, um, and I told my sister, I said, I don't even have any ideas for a company. Like this is, you know, this, I don't know where this, where you, what you want me to do with this. Right. So I'm riding bikes with a friend of mine and she's complaining to me about how her mom is an artist and her mom is very, very talented, but isn't really good at making money as, as being, you know, marketing herself basically. Right. And she said, you know, I feel like in some ways I'm not even as talented as my mom, but I'm just better at the business side of things. And she said, and it really bothers me because my mom, my mom goes on online and pays, you know, let's say $200 for this homemade video that these women put together, you know, on a specific art technique that my mom wants to learn so that she can then use it in her own work or teach students because she also teaches. And then she spends another, you know, $50 or $100 on a PDF leave behind because guess what? Those videos go away Mm. right after the five weeks or whatever of the course that you're taking, the equal. The e-course and mm-hmm. e-courses mm-hmm. were kind of a new oh, thing yeah. Yeah, at this yeah. point. So I said, wow, that that's crazy. You know, I was like, I use a site called lynda.com, which is 25 mm-hmm. bucks and you get everything. Right. right and I right. learned how to code. I've learned everything. I said, that's silly. There should be a, a lynda.com for art classes. Right. So Etsy and lynda.com should just get together. And she's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yeah, we could just film all of it, you know, like <laughs> yeah. we'll just do it ourselves, you know, with our home video camp. Well, like we could do a better job. I know how to create a website. I know how to do video editing. I know how to do everything. Like I could just, we could just go do this. So fast forward, I'm thinking, oh my God, this has to exist. Please let this exist because there's no way that I want to do this. Right. Cause I don't want to start a company. And on our way back to San Francisco, I'm telling Dave about this conversation. And he said, well, you have the perfect name. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, the first URL that you bought, like, you know, 12 years ago, mm-hmm. creativebug.com, creative bug. I was like, yeah. oh my God, you're right. That's the perfect name. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Whoa. Okay. Need to do this. So then I, yeah. So then I came back and I, you know, I, I went, I had a couple of like blogger friends who were doing these e-courses and they were actually doing really well financially. And so I went to them to ask them, you know, how, how does it work? And like, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about an all you can make plan? You know? And they're like, it's not going to work. It's already being done. And so, you know, they're like, we're, you know, we're making like, people are making so much money that they're not gonna, you know, they're not going to do this, you know, they're not going to do this sort of like share in one revenue pile. Mm -hmm. So the idea of creative bug was if I'm a jewelry designer and you're a fabric designer, right. We have very different audiences. But if we're on the same platform, then we're actually helping each other because 
my audience is being exposed to you Mm -hmm. and your audience is being exposed to mine, to me. Mm -hmm. And then we would pay people uh, based on, you know, how popular their classes were. And so it was almost like all ships rise together. And, do, and, you know, like, and people would submit their own content or did you regulate that? No. And, and so we filmed it. Oh, okay. So what I, so, so what I did was I came up with, um, you know, I just became the door to door salesman. So I, I was like, I have to do this. Everyone was like, what are you doing? You have this great corporate career. You're, you know, all the men at time Inc were like, you're going to go do what? Like, <laughs> you're going to start a craft website. And I was like, I just put blinders on and I was like, yep, yep. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> And I just, I, you know, I, I tried to, di- you know, dim the noise around me of the naysayers. And I was like, I have to do this. This doesn't exist. I cannot believe this doesn't exist, at least in the way that I can relate to it. Mm-hmm. And so I went and I sat in on art classes around San Francisco at all these nonprofits, because one of the ideas was that we would have, an, you know, we would give money back to nonprofit art organizations, since that's usually like the first thing to get cut in schools. Um, and I would just sit in on people's classes and introduce myself after the class. And then if I liked the way that they teach, you know, they taught the class, I would, I would show them screens of the website that I designed. And then I would ask them like, Hey, you want to be on my website? I mean, it was literally that. Um, and so that happened. I was doing that. I was working on it at night while I was working at Time Inc. And then, um, a friend of mine who worked, her office was right next to mine. She comes into my office and she hands me this book. And it's this beautiful book called Weekend Handmade by Kelly Wilkinson. And Kelly Wilkinson at that point was, um, at that time, was a reporter on NPR in San Francisco at KQED. Mm-hmm. And so I said, why are you giving me this book? Because no one knew that I was, like, living this double life and I was working at night on this other idea. Um, and she's like, I don't know. You're the only art person on the floor, and it's my friend's sister, and I thought you might, you know, I thought you might want to check it out. I was like, uh, yeah, I do want to check it out. So I immediately contact Kelly. She lives in my neighborhood. Hmm. Of course she does, right? Mm-hmm. So it was just everything was falling into place. And I went and told her about the idea. And I was like, I can't really pay you that much. But like, here's the idea. And here are like 85 things that I need an editorial person to do. And maybe you want to do 20. And I don't know. And she was like, I'm leaving NPR. I'm coming to work for Creative Bug. This is my dream job. <laughs> these 85 things. I don't care Like if you can't pay me that much. And I was like, what? <clears throat> so... So that, you know, that happened over and over again. I mean, we were interviewing people at like a tiny like pie shop in the Mission District in San Francisco, Hmm. which was dumb because there was no Wi-Fi there. But like we were interviewing like film people, you know, like film guys who, you know, we couldn't afford a steady cam. So we used skateboards, you know, to get the shots. (laughs) Right. I mean, we did. We just pieced it together. And I didn't think that these guys who were in their 20s who were super hip, right? I didn't think that they would be into like filming a fabric designer doing sewing classes in her studio in New York. And they were super into it. And they said, the reason why we love doing this is because we see ourselves as artists. And so we're like artists filming artists. Hmm. And so it doesn't really matter what the art is. It's the fact that there's a respect there. So were you they know, were they bringing were they bringing their own equipment and everything so you didn't have to go out and source all that or did I mean how did that No so I so I got it so I'm getting ahead of myself so I paid out of pocket I paid for a two man film crew to film a painter so we could do a test class that I would then use to try and go raise money which I had never done before so mm-hmm. God help me so we went through this day and I thought maybe I could raise $150,000 friends and family. Like, I don't know, just do something. Right. And then I could do everything myself. So I could, you know, hire contractors, freelancers to shoot, you know, ad hoc. And then I could do all the video editing. And I mean, it was after that day, that 12 hour day, I remember driving home sobbing at the wheel thinking, Oh my God, I can't do this. I like, I can't do this. I need like $600,000 or something, you know, I need that. Like, this, what am I thinking? This is not possible. So then I was like, okay. So I went and talked to a couple of friends. I mean, you know, when you're, I think at this point I was 39 and I, and when you're 39, you're kind of a grown up, right? So all of a sudden you look around you and you're like, oh, I actually know people who like, you know, who know investors or, mm-hmm. you know, we're yeah. all kind of grown ups at this point. So right. I asked around, I put together an executive summary. My executive summary ended up getting in front of someone who is it, you know, who loved the idea. Um, you know, I went in for like a trial pitch and this is when I was like really starting to meditate because I'm the person, I don't like public speaking. And now, you know, and I've done all these, I've done all these presentations in my former corporate life 
you know, to pitch brands on, Mm -hmm. you know, advertising with us at the different magazines, but now I had to like pitch myself. Right. So I put together this pitch. I went in, a friend hooked me up with, um, you know, some investors who said they would hear my pitch. You know, I was given like maybe a 0% chance, but it was going to be a good experience. And I went in and I was there for two and a half hours. Wow. And, and it was, and they were like, how much do you need? And I told them and they're like, okay, we'll do the deal. Do you have a term sheet? And I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I was like, and did you yeah. have a term sheet? You did. Okay. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, no, right. I didn't. <laughs> no, but I'll come back to you quickly. No, David. I said, I said yeah. yep. And I literally ran down the street to <clears throat> Shepard Mullen. <laughs> and oh yeah. Like, walked into the reception area. Like, can I talk to a lawyer? I mean, oh, my it was gosh. like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is that all of this happened right around Thanksgiving time of 2011. And that's when Dave and I got married. And so it was right around our uh, wedding anniversary. And here I was like, my whole family's on my health plan. You know, I had like this pretty good gig. Right. And, and I said, okay, like for real here, like if, if I do this, I'm going to be making like, you know, nothing basically. Um, you know, you, he knew some of the, he knew the people in the room. Right. Mm -hmm. So that there's like damage to his reputation. If I screw up, there's just a lot of layers in this deal. Um, and he was, Dave was awesome. He said, you know what? He's like, he's like, if you don't do this, I know you. And if you don't do this, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. Mm. He's like, so if we end up losing everything, I lose my job, whatever. And we end up in a one bedroom apartment, then fine. Like at least we're still together. And he's like, this is what life is about, Sean. He's like, let's, I was like, we are literally jumping off a cliff here. He's like, let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) And I was like, I love it. Oh my God. I hope this works out. So I'm going anyway, to, so pa- I'm going to, I'm going to pause you there. Okay. Yeah. Because we're going to run out of time. And I know, so, no, 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 this is great. So here's what I want to do though. Cause I want to give you the time. We got about five minutes and I do okay. want to ask you a few questions. I want you also to get a, the opportunity to give a shout out to your new business. Oh yes. um, By the way, I want to just highlight, I love that. And I also love the aspect of your spouse, uh, kind of doing it with you. Cause one of the things I think people forget as you get older and you've got responsibilities, you've got to weigh these decisions, right? So there are a lot of people like, you know, it's, it, it, they're in this world we live in, it's not, you know, there's personal fulfillment that's important, but you got people in your life who count on you, need you, you've got responsibilities and you got to assume, Hey, this is a big, important part of my life as well. So uh, yeah. to get the buy-in from your family, I think is, um, is huge and, and part of the story that, that we want to tell. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't have done it without him. And I think that's why a lot of founders are in their twenties, to be honest, because they don't have the responsibilities, as you said, they're not carrying other people, you know? Well, so you start, you started the company and you sold it and you did very well in a, what did it take a year? It was kind of crazy, right? It was a, Um, yeah, it was crazy. I think, yeah, it was 10 months after we launched, we ended up uh, getting acquired. Okay, so give us, yeah. and then we're going to wrap on some other things. Give me the 30-second spiel on your new business. So Capture. Uh, Capture is basically uh, digital and photo video boards that are private. Um, think of them as sort of like digital bulletin boards that you can share with other people, i.e. your family. I actually went on, um, I went on the App Store and checked it out. I haven't downloaded it yet, but I read all about it. It looks pretty cool and original. I don't know. Is there anybody else even doing it? Or maybe no, you don't, don't want to answer that question. Nobody like Capture, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's not it's not a social network. Um, it's really a place. It's it's supposed to be uh, – it's supposed to serve as a shared media library across loved ones, right? So yeah. if I don't have that picture of my dad from the military, you know, then my brother does. Mm-hmm. Then he puts it on our board, our family board on Capture. Mm-hmm. And you can also record audio over it. Then, you oh, know, nice. me being the youngest of six kids, I missed a lot of, of them growing up. Right. I mean, when my dad was starting, apparently they had like no money and, you know, I got to go to Burger King and my older siblings didn't get to go to Burger King, you know, cause my dad's business was doing better. I mean, they had a different childhood than mm-hmm. I did because there's nine years between us. Mm-hmm. And so capture was a way of me, a staying connected to my family without broadcasting my life on other platforms that are more public. Right. Especially now that I'm in Hawaii, it's really important to me that I, you know, share what I'm doing here, but not in like a weird braggy way because, right. you know, right. that's weird. So, um, so Capture is really a place where we can stay connected and there's no advertising. It's just a storage fee. 
And it's a place that we can collaborate on kind of a time capsule mm-hmm. that over, you know, evolves over time. And yeah. so that, you know, like my, my kids right now, like we have an SF Lewis board, which is just the four of us. And so I put like, you know, the graphic pictures of like them right after they were born, you know, with this stuff all over them. And, you know, and then I recorded like what happened that day when they were born, you know, and that's a really intimate thing that, that they have now with my voice associated with that, that they can look at. That's not for public consumption. And so it's just a private way to share like like, collaborate on memories. And, um, well, I think, and and I think today people are so kind of weirded out by probably more so today. I will say this, like my 17 year old, and I think he's just being glib about it, but he's like, yeah, I don't mind if they know. I think a lot, most people I talk to don't like the fact that people take your data, they use your data, they know everything about you, you've broadcasted it everywhere. So, I mean, I guess you still have whatever those issues, and I don't know your, 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 yeah. uh, you know, how you got to monetize it and all that. But the, um, but the idea of having a, cl- you know, closed network that's just for family, I think is a great idea. And it's capture yeah. C A P S U R E, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the website is captureit.com. Cause yeah. I think there's another company that's not related to our area, but, um, so, so, so a couple of, so, so how do you, um, let's, let's just a couple more questions, actually. How do you, um, I mean, the fact that you guys moved to the big Island in Hawaii is just, I love that. Um, and I want to talk about the rum on a, on another episode. Um, <laughs> you should interview Steve. As well. I hear about that. I'm going to do that, but how do you, jo- how do you manage your day? So you, you're running a company, you got work, so I, you got people in California, you've got kids, you've got yep. Dave, you got my co-founder so, is in Oakland yes. and my engineers are in Oakland. And so I get up, I start my day at 6am so that I'm, you know, 9am and you know, they're, they're engineers, right? So they're usually doing, you know, they sh- pop online probably mm-hmm. around 10, even mm-hmm. though they stay up all night and you know, they're probably up at four in the morning. They work odd hours. And how'd you find, how, how did you find the of, engineers? Was this from your prior work or from a investor? Um, or how yeah. Did, okay. I mean, my, my co-founder used to work at the company that ended up buying my last company. Um, and so he was the head of product. Got and it. so he has a pretty, pretty big mm-hmm. network of engineers. Okay. And so they were just people that he used to work with. And are they full time for you or do they work for other people yes. as well? Okay. okay. They're full time. Yeah. They're full time. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I do that. And then, um, we, you know, we have calls, uh, on a weekly basis and then we use Slack. Slack is really our lifeline. I hear about Slack. Um, I just read about this, but I don't, I haven't used it. So I it's... mean, I couldn't do what I'm doing hmm. from Hawaii if Slack didn't, if, if we didn't have a tool like Slack, I'm it, sure there are a... other tools just like Slack, but and it's like it's a an com- ongoing conversation. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, it's like in, in intra intra company network kind of thing. Yeah. But Got for it. anyone, right, you can yeah. set one up for any company or any, even just a group of friends. Yeah. And so, you know, you can exchange documents like images, you know, there are different channels. You can create different channels. So we have a channel for growth. We have a channel for engineering. We have a channel for, we're uh, building out our website right now. So we have like a channel dedicated just to the website development, stuff like that. Um, so I do that. And then I honestly, you know, in San Francisco, I miss all of our friends. I think that's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. But I am, I, I have a lot of like frenetic energy, you know, and I, I like to go and like off on many different tangents, which you can probably tell. <laughs> and so I think for me, I just needed to get out of the noise of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. San Francisco is so uh, chaotic and, and, and there's so many things going on in the tech space and there's like, you know, meetups and cocktail parties and so-and-so is giving a lecture on growth and, you know, there's just everything that you could ever want to know about technology and what's happening with startups is happening there. And San Francisco is not a big city Mm -hmm. uh, compared to New York. And so you're just in it, you know, and and it's your daily life. And I really want, I like, if I can exercise, meditate and feel productive at work, then I'm a nice person and you can live with me. Right. (laughs) And then I'm, that turns into me being a better parent and a better spouse, you know? And so with Hawaii, it's like, I go in the ocean once a week, you know, I smell fresh cut grass every day. Yeah. I mean, these are things that I did not have in San Francisco. I wear flip flops. I wear a tank top and shorts, yeah. you know, without freezing to death. Right. Um, and so I feel like I've been on this sort of path of trying to meditation has helped me so much with my business. Like I would have these super intense, you know, conversations where I would be 
worried that I wouldn't be able to articulate my, what I needed to, you know, what I, the message I needed to get across. Mm -hmm. And so I would literally do like a 10 minute session of meditation to try and calm down. And then I would ask that my higher self show up and have a conversation with whoever I'm talking to his higher self. So they can just get on with business while I just sit here and talk gibberish, you know? And so I, I rely on that a lot. I, you know, if I, if I can meditate twice a day and I can exercise for 45 minutes, like go for a run, I'm happy. So, Um, so, so how do you, uh, and we're going to end on this general topic, but how do you define success now? And this is, I like, how do you, how do you define it now in your life with your family, your job and all these things? And, and, and I, in success can be like an objective, right? I mean, it it can be defined a lot of different ways. How's that different from how you would have defined it? when you were 22 and then looking down the road, 20 years down the road, kids grown, you know, business, maybe you're still doing business. Maybe it's in the rear view mirror. What do you want to look back? If you were just saying today, if you look back and say, Hey, I, I had a, a well spent life, right? I did what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm successful. I'm happy doing, you know, how, how would you kind of break those things out? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, I think that we all are, you know, we all have like gifts that we're meant to discover when we're in each lifetime, you know, whether you're believing in reincarnation or not. And so our job is to figure out what that gift is. And then that gift is usually something where you can be of service to the world somehow. And so I think that, you know, I think in my twenties, I didn't really get that. I just thought I need to get a higher, get to a higher rung on the ladder. You know, it was all about like, right. where can I go next? Where right. can I go next? Okay, what's next? Without a- ever really appreciating where I was at the time. Um, and my mom used to complain, you know, when I was a kid, I, she would say, you always have to have something to look forward to. And I was like, but that's what gets me up in the morning is having something to look forward to. But now that I'm older, I feel like she's right. You know, I shouldn't be looking forward to the next thing. I should be looking at where I am now and appreciating it because this moment is not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. And so with my kids, you know, one of the things that I worry about is technology. You know, like when we were younger, we didn't have cell feeds and we didn't have video of ourselves at the alarming rate that they do. Um, And so I'm worried about the long-term effects of that, A, like, does that make them super self-conscious, you know? Um, But I also, I want my kids to feel like they can do anything, you know, And, and I want them to follow their heart. I don't want them to do something because they think they'll make a lot of money. You know, I want them to, I want them to feel confident in themselves that they can work towards a goal and then feel like they've accomplished it on their own and it wasn't given to them. Um, I mean, I, I feel like life is just a series of connecting the dots. And so if you're paying attention, if you're putting a puzzle together, which is your life, what you have to be paying attention when each piece appears. Right. And if you're not paying attention because you're moving at, you know, a thousand miles an hour, which I felt like I was doing in San Francisco, you're not actually there and you're not present to fun- to figure out, oh, that piece goes here. Okay. Look at the puzzle. Let's, let's take, take a step back and admire how, how much progress we've made. And so I just hope that my kids, you know, I don't like, I mean, they do really well in school, you know, and, and that's important, but I don't make that the most important. You know, I say, wow, that's a great job. I'm glad you did that. I'm glad you're doing so well. Your class sounds really, you know, really, really great. Like, do you, are you enjoying yourself? It's more important to me that they're actually enjoying learning versus trying to get the A. Um, So I guess if I, if I look back and, you know, I'm still meditating twice a day and my kids actually like me, then that's successful. I mean, I have a teenager now, so some days I feel like, wow, I don't know if she actually likes me, <laughs> but everyone keeps, everyone keeps telling me that that yeah, will change, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and so I'm like, I, I do feel like I've had this, you know, this time with the teenager to where I could like put my stamp in and be like, this is what I believe. This yeah. is what I can teach you. And then now she's on her own and I have to respect the fact that it's her life yeah. and she's on her own journey and she's got to figure out what her gift is. And I, that, unfortunately that has nothing to do with me. I think at some point. So. You think you're uh, still on the Big Island ten years from now? I mean, it's pretty nice here. <laughs> <laughs> and you're inland, ways anyway. I mean, we 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 well, we agreed to two years. So can I just tell you real quick yeah, how this happened? Sure. So you know, 
one of the, like, I wouldn't have been able to start companies without Dave, right? right? Because you need someone to like man the fort and be like the solid rock, which he is. And so when this whole rum thing came about, I said, you know what? It's your turn. It's really harder on the spouse when someone else is doing a startup. So I was like, it's your turn. I'm like, and if you raise money, like, and we have to move to the big island and you have to put your straw hat on and work on the farm and like make it happen. Like I'm, I'm all in, like we will move there. If we have, if we have to move to Hawaii, I guess I'll do that. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? No, no, I mean, no, I'm just joking. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's fewer than 200,000 people. on. Oh, the I know. No, I mean, the, I mean I, the, oh yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. To, it it's one like thing to go visit. On Mars. Yeah. 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 I mean, there is just, you know, miles of lava rock right. in all directions. So anyway, so then, you know, when he actually raised the money, he, well, his cousin, you know, who's the CEO, I was like, oh my God, you know, this is it. This is kind of like our Thanksgiving. This is kind of like when I raise money, like mm -hmm. we're going, jumping off a cliff again and mm -hmm. it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And so while I still have my startup and I'm very committed to that, I, I have been, you know, super supportive and, yeah. you know, I mean, I do thank him every day, basically, that we get to live in Hawaii because of him, because, you know, yeah. of this opportunity. But, you know, and my and my my kids, you know, my kids are at this super liberal school where they wear flip flops and they wear their own clothes. You know, they wear whatever they want, where they came from a super strict Catholic school. And so I think their worlds are expanding a little bit because mm -hmm. they're they're meeting different types of people and learning how to speak Hawaiian. And hmm. yeah, that's cool. I mean, and how's the Mandarin? How's is, the Mandarin you know, coming? She is taking Mandarin, yeah. but she's also, she really, she likes it, but she really likes her Hawaiian cultural studies class where oh, she's yeah. learning the language and, oh, that's awesome. you know, she's become sort of our resident translator. When we can't read a street sign, she'll, she'll rattle it off pretty easily. Oh, wow. That's um, so cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And they're meeting, you know, they're meeting kids from all different backgrounds. I mean, people that we would never meet in San Francisco. So which is funny really because fortunate. if you're living in the in the states, it's like you would think San Francisco, you would meet people from all over. But but uh, I guess every place. Is yeah, different. I think San Francisco has so many option, options that people that are alike tend to clump mm, together. Yeah, that makes sense. Whereas here, it's you know there are not a lot of people here. So yeah. well, we're gonna come. We're have. gonna come see you. Maybe we'll do a podcast from Hawaii sometime. Be yes, Becca's bucking. Oh for my that. gosh, that would be awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry if I just rambled on. Oh, no. It's, listen, I think this is all, all this is about is conversations and perspectives. So I loved it. It was great. Uh, give Dave a hug for me, and uh, we'll look forward to getting him or uh, his cousins on. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Take care, guys. All nice right. You. Take care. All Thank right. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today, Breakfast at Stinson's. We are very happy to have you. Next week, we'll be back with another great guest. So please join us. In the meantime, come visit us at Stinson's. We're at 45th and Burnett Road. Come have a taco, a coffee, or a cocktail. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks.